What's up everybody? Jason Page here and welcome back to another light painting video. In this video, I'm going to talk all about camera rotation photography. If you saw one of the last videos I put out, it was all about um, creating pyramids in the sky using nothing but the ambient light and camera movement or camera rotation. In that video, I have a special camera rotation tool that I received from Chris and Alan Thompson about eight years ago. I had a bunch of people write me and ask if there was some kind of off the shelf solution to do camera rotation since that tool is not available anymore. And luckily there is. This is called a 360 panoramic tripod gimbal. And you can use this right off the shelf without any modifications to do camera rotation photography. Once we get this thing set up, we'll take it out into the field, create some camera rotations, and I'll show you how to take just an ordinary scene and turn it into something really extraordinary using nothing but camera rotation. I'm 99% sure that this a gimbal came with the uh, quarter inch screw mount, the regular screw that goes onto your tripod. I'm 99% sure that it came with that. And quite honestly, I think that would be a much better way to mount this thing onto the tripod because it would, as well as you know having the, the 360 part of it, you're also gonna have the, the pan and tilt that you would normally have on your tripod here. Um, but I screwed up. So that's one thing you don't wanna do is don't lose the screw that comes in the box. But since I lost that, I'm gonna mount it directly to the sticks or the legs of the, the tripod here. And all you gotta do to do that is take off, unscrew your normal tripod head, which is really pretty easy to do. If you haven't done that in a long time on your tripod, it can get a little sticky on there, so you just gotta give it a little, a little uh, elbow grease and you'll get that thing off of there. Once you remove your normal tripod head, you'll just see the little screw sticking up out of the legs of the tripod here, and you see the threading there on the bottom of your tripod gimbal. All you're gonna do is take that, match it up, screw it on there. You just wanna be very careful not to cross thread it or anything silly like that. It should screw on nice and easy, and you're gonna screw this thing down all the way down until it becomes nice and tight on your tripod. You don't wanna over tighten it, but just give it a little twist once you get it nice and locked down on there. What the tripod gimbal or 360 tripod gimbal allows you to do is have a stable platform for your camera, but you can still twist and move the camera in all kinds of different directions. That is not what we're going to be using it for though. We are going to be creating all kinds of cool kaleidoscopic geometric patterns using this in a slightly different way than its original intended use. Now we have this mounted securely to the tripod itself. We're gonna lock these things down just so we don't get any movement. And we are going to go ahead and put the camera on the tripod plate that comes with it. The camera that I'm using is the Canon 6D Mark II along with the Sigma 24 to 105 lens. As you can see, this is a pretty hefty camera and this gimbal will support the weight of this even rotating all the way around 360 degrees. The first thing you wanna do is make sure that the plate is lined up parallel with the camera. You don't want it all off askew or weird or anything like that. Just make sure it's nice and level, as straight as you can get it with the camera. After you get the camera finger tightened down, this part is important. Take a screwdriver and screw it down a little bit tighter. The last thing that you want to happen is you do not want your tripod plate becoming loose and your camera falling off and falling to the ground and busting your lens or busting your camera or something like that. Because again, remember, you're taking this thing and your camera is gonna be upside down at some point. So you wanna make sure that everything is screwed down nice and tight. Once you get it screwed down nice and tight and you feel confident, you can go ahead and mount it on the gimbal. One other thing to watch out for is if you have a flip out screen on your camera, flip it out prior to putting it on the gimbal. I do this constantly. I put it on the tripod gimbal before I flip the screen out. So just make sure, flip out the screen before you put it on the tripod gimbal because you will not be able to flip it out once it's on the gimbal. We're gonna put the camera on the gimbal and screw it down as tight as we can with the uh, flip out screen already flipped out if your camera has that ability. 
Now that I have the camera securely mounted on the gimbal, the next thing we need to do is basically center the camera on the gimbal. The next part is what I find to be the most difficult part about camera rotation photography, and that is finding that center axis point of the camera and the lens combination. I'm gonna show you the technique that I use to do it, but if you guys, if anybody's out there familiar with camera rotation photography and you have a better technique, please do put it down in the comment section because I would love to learn a better way to do this. If you have a better way to do it, please do put it down below. But this is the technique that I use and what I find has worked best for me so far. What I do is I use a stationary object along with the live view function on my camera. Along with live view, I also turn on the full grid on the camera so that I can see the center of the frame very easily. What I'm doing is I'm lining up the camera so that my stationary object, in this case just a circle plexiglass, is in the center of the frame. And then I just watch the live view and do the full camera rotation and just physically watch to see is the stationary object staying within the center of the frame. If it's not staying in the center of the frame, there's a couple things I can do. I can make an adjustment vertically using the lever on the gimbal itself, and then I can also make an adjustment horizontally using the tripod plate. So I can loosen that up on the tripod plate and just slide the tripod plate either left or right to make an adjustment that way. And I just repeat that process over and over until I'm satisfied that my stationary object is staying relatively in the center throughout my entire camera rotation. The next thing that we have to add to this equation is some way to follow the different degrees of rotation. And what I find works best for me is simply a cell phone hot shoe mount. All I gotta do is put this thing right here into the hot shoe, screw it down nice and tight. Again, you don't want this thing falling out, so make sure you screw everything down nice and tight. Put that thing down nice and tight. Where's my phone at? Find my phone. Find my phone. And then you just take your phone and you put it into the hot shoe mount. Another thing you want to watch out for is try to find the smallest cell phone mount that you can for your hot shoe. You want to make sure it sits as close to the camera as you can find because another thing that's going to screw with your mind is you're going to go do all that work to get that perfect center point. You're gonna be all excited, you got that perfect center point. Then you go to put your cell phone hot shoe mount on there, you go to rotate the camera and oops, boom, it hits the uh, gimbal and then you can't do your camera rotation because you've got the perfect center point but your cell phone is too big. Point being on all this, don't stress it. Go out, have fun, that is what matters. So this is a setup that I'm gonna use to go out in the field and create some pretty cool images. I hope the next time I see you, we'll be at the first location. We're at the first location where we're gonna do our first camera rotation. Uh, this spot here, just standing up here at the top of a parking garage in Jupiter at a place called Harborside. The reason I picked this spot, Harborside in Jupiter, is because they have an amphitheater that's uh, got some really colorful lights on it, and I know it'll make a really cool camera rotation. But that spot was a little busy with people walking around and having dinner and stuff like that. So we came up to the top of the parking garage. Lights going off. So we came up to the top of the parking garage here so I can just shoot this bridge right here. I showed you guys earlier the camera rotation setup and all that stuff in the studio. But now I'm just gonna go over again all the tools that I'll be using to create this camera rotation image. The first thing that we'll be using is the camera and the camera is the Canon 6D Mark II along with the Sigma 24 to 105 lens. The other thing that I've got set up here on the camera is the mount for the phone. So this is where my phone is going to go. It's going to go right in here and it's going to have the, the level app on it that you can see right here. One important tip when you're using the level app on your phone is you want to turn off the auto rotate. That way the level is going to remain constant and it's not going to be flipping around and trying to change with the rotation of your phone. The only other tool that I'll be using is just this little uh, shutter release and that is how we will 
be triggering the camera to start and stop the exposure. All right, so I'm putting it on here and I am tightening it down really well. Again, you wanna make sure everything is tightened down because you're gonna be flipping your camera upside down. You don't want that thing falling off. So let's make sure everything is nice and tight. The way I'm gonna be creating this image is by physically capping and uncapping the lens. So I'm gonna be putting the lens cap on and off, on and off in one single exposure while I'm also turning the camera. I know that may sound a little confusing, but I'll show you exactly how I'm gonna do it here in just a second. But the first step is making sure I have a proper exposure for just a single shot, as if I was gonna do just one single shot. So, well, I am doing one single shot, but if I was just doing one shot, no rotation. So I'm gonna get that proper exposure now. I'll tell you what it is, and then we'll work from there as we rotate the camera. I'm gonna run through one right now. The settings are ISO 100 F11, and I'm gonna be uncapping the lens for about three, maybe four seconds on each of my cap and uncap. And I'm gonna be stopping every 20 degrees. So there's 360 degrees in a full rotation. I'll be stopping at every 20 degrees for each of my points where I take the lens cap off and allow some light into the camera to expose. And then that progressively through one exposure will build that really cool camera rotation image. So here we go. I'm starting the exposure now, leveled out at just about zero. That's as close as I'm gonna get. Uh, just loosening up the back here of the gimbal so it's nice and easy to turn. Starting exposure with the little shutter release here. So we've started, the lens cap is on right now. I'm gonna take the lens cap off for about three seconds. One, two, three, and put it right back on. So the exposure is still running and now I'm gonna turn the camera watching my level here to about 20 degrees. Again, this is very difficult to get exactly precise. So about 20 is where I'm at and that's about good. So here we go again. Now I'm uncapping the lens again to allow more light into the camera. One, two, three. Putting the lens cap back on and I'm just gonna repeat that process all the way around. So now I'm gonna stop at 40. there. One, two, three. Flip into 60. One, two, three. Back to 80 again. It's a little off, we'll go there. This image is gonna be interesting too because of the cars going over the bridge, you're gonna add a different element into there. You're also gonna get some of those car trails as well as the, the rotation of the camera itself. Just trying to level that out perfect. Last one here, one, two, three. That's it. Now we stop the exposure and see what we got. And there you go. As you can see here, on the image, you get this really cool camera rotation. Each one of these lines is the bridge, but they're building this geometric pattern as you do the camera rotation. You can even see some of the car streaks in there with the red lights and the brake lights going over the bridge, and then the headlights coming back towards us from the opposite side of the bridge. So you can do this with just a simple shot like this with the bridge and some street lights. 
But hopefully uh, the amphitheater area will clear out a little bit and I'll be able to go down there and show you guys what you can do when you have a structure with some color. It's got a really cool shape to that amphitheater. It's almost like a flower petal or something like that. It's really interesting. So I'm gonna go down there and do some camera rotations of that as well. The possibilities are truly limitless with camera rotation. There's a bunch of guys you should check out. I'm just gonna name a few. I'm gonna forget a ton of people, but Chris Thompson, check him out. Tim Gamble, Mart, um, Johnny Dickerson, all those guys, if you check them out, they do absolutely insane stuff with camera rotation. But this is your basic rig. Super easy to make, straight out of the box. The only thing you need to get on top of the gimbal is the little phone mount, so you can put your phone in there and use your digital level on your phone. And you can go out and create all kinds of incredible images using this pretty inexpensive, I think this is 100 bucks for this gimbal, you can go out and do this. And again, possibilities are absolutely limitless. I'm gonna go down and check out the other area where the amphitheater is. Hopefully it is cleared out. And if it is, we'll shoot some more video and I'll run you through a couple more of these. If not, I'll just show you the images that I create down there. And I hope you guys like this video. If you do, please do give me the thumbs up down below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything at all, put it down in the comment section. If you put a comment, you hit that like button, YouTube will put this video out to more people. And I would love it if you would support my work and support what I'm doing with this YouTube channel and support me trying to get light painting out to the world um, by just hitting the like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and if you want, share the video. Hopefully I'll be able to shoot some more video down there at the amphitheater, but if I can't, I'll show you what I created in a couple different spots around town here. And if it is the end, until the next video, guys, get out there and get creative. creative.